our sun has been giving us some gorgeous eye candy, launching multiple solar storms, and at least one of them is Earth-directed. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is definitely keeping us on our toes. As we take a look at our front side sun, look at all the prominence action all the way around the limb. There's a lot of eye candy to look at, including some filament eruptions. In fact, back on the 27th, you can actually see region 2849. That is an old region, but you look and you can see a huge fireball get launched right off to the east of Earth. And then, of course, you can actually see another filament or in the north that was from region 2846 and you can actually watch it and it erupts and fires off a solar storm so we've got two solar storms and then if you go back on the 29th you go back to old region 2849 and it tries to launch that same filament again so we have at least three solar storms one to the east one to the west and one that looks like it's coming straight at us and man it's going to be a very interesting period of time meanwhile you wouldn't believe it but all those regions have decayed we don't actually have any sunspots on the Earth-facing disk right now. The solar storms are really what's the story. Now taking a look at Stereo's view, this is Stereo A and it's looking at the sun just a little bit from the side. You can actually see regions 28, 46, 47, and 48 pretty much in the west limb of Stereo's view. And you can even watch a couple of those eruptions we were talking about launching those partially Earth-directed solar storms. But as you look past that toward the east limb in Stereo's view, there's not a lot going on. We do have a couple regions in the south that are rotating into Stereo's view, but they don't seem to be that flare active. The nice thing is that they do uh, have enough brightness that they probably will keep that solar flux up into the mid to high 70s over this next week. And that's great news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders for radio propagation. But it doesn't look like they're gonna get very much in terms of flare activity or solar storm activity. So so once these Earth-directed solar storms kind of fizzle out and we get through that, it looks like we can rest just for a little bit. Now switching to coronagraphs, this is the LASCO coronagraph aboard the SOHO spacecraft and the view is from Earth. And we're gonna concentrate on the difference images because the raw images don't show the features quite as well. Now you can see back on the 27th, you can see that eruption that moves off to the left of the image. That is from the eruption, that big fireball that came off on the 27th, and it looks like it's gonna go east of Earth. But then as we get to the 28th, look at this. You've got an eruption to the west, eruption to the east, and this slow growing feature that looks like it's kind of just coming straight out above and below you. This looks like there's at least two if not three different eruptions and they're going east and west and they're going straight at earth so it sure made things pretty exciting but it also makes it extremely difficult for forecasters to try to do model predictions to know and see through this entire mess what exactly is coming toward earth and what's actually going to miss us but it sure makes it fun and it sure looks like we've got at least one of the uh, eruptions that is earth directed and it looks like aurora could be in our future now switching to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil, this is NASA's version of the model, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And you can see that third, that last of the solar storms that was launched late on the 28th, early into the 29th, you can see it coming out being a direct hit at Earth. But remember, prior to this event, we actually have a solar storm coming off to the east and another one coming off to the west that it's ahead of this particular storm. So it's going to be a very interesting traffic jam on the way to Earth that's kind of hard to know what we'll be seeing. But with this direct hit, we're expecting that late on August 2nd, yet we might start Start seeing some mild effects even a full day earlier. So aurora photographers, keep your batteries charged because we could start getting some mild aurora as early as August 1st. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon. And by August 3rd, the moon will be less than 25% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, now's a great chance to catch some dim objects in the sky and I don't know, maybe some aurora from some coming solar storms. 
Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating that set of solar storms that is that are headed toward Earth. We've got one going off to the east, one going off to the west, and then one it looks like it's going to hit us right down the middle. So at high latitudes, NOAA's expecting only unsettled conditions, but then on about the second, we could jump up to minor storm conditions. And we do even have a possibility of major storm at, at high latitudes, starting with about 40% in and around July 31st and rising up from there, especially when we get hit by that more direct impact from that, that third solar storm that is on its way. But it's really kind of hard to tell. It's a little bit of a mixed bag, but things should continue storming in through the second and third before things calm down. At mid latitudes, we're really Really only expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about active conditions, you know, maybe maybe even minor storm conditions. Again, it's really hard to tell with all this traffic in the way how things are going to settle out. It's a mixed bag. I've, I've been conservative saying about a 25% chance of a minor storm, not expecting a whole lot from that direct hit, but we shall see. So Aurora photographers, you know, stay on your toes. It could be anything from mild to a bit on the wild side hard to tell at this point, but we could have at least some level of disturbance starting around the 31st and possibly in through the 3rd. Oh my goodness, that should give you some decent chances for Aurora, so definitely keep those batteries charged. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, believe it or not, we are back to being all in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We do have a few active regions on the Earth-facing disk right now, but they have been decaying a bit, so they've all lost their sunspot designations, and they're just kind of petering out very slowly. So we have no risk for radio blackouts, which should make GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. However, these bright regions are keeping the solar flux up into the high to mid 70s and likely this is going to stay like this even as some of these regions begin to rotate off of the sun's west limb because we have new regions that are going to rotate on to the sun's east limb here in a few days so amateur radio operators and emergency responders enjoy this decent you know marginally decent radio propagation on earth's day side over this coming week just know those solar storms are coming so nighttime eh, it could be a different story for propagation now also because we are still climbing out of solar minimum uh, the cosmic ray flux is still, it's dropping, but it's still a bit more elevated than we'd like it to be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes. You are in the moderate range for radiation dose. This is the D2 minor level. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. And this does include prenatal passengers. So the space weather this week is definitely keeping us on our toes. The sun has given us some gorgeous eye candy in terms of filament eruptions, and we have multiple solar storms. One at least is heading toward Earth, and we could get grazed by the other two, one to the east of us and one to the west of us. So we have a lot to look forward to. Aurora photographers, definitely stay on your toes because we could get a little bump up in Aurora activity starting as early as the first. And then we could get even more enhancement right around the second when we get that direct hit. And then that could actually last until about the third before things finally begin to die down. So, hey, we might have a couple days of, of aurora chances, which would be really nice. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, of course, you're not really liking the solar storms all that much. Not sure they're going to be all that intense, so they could bother propagation, especially on Earth's night side, but it may not be as, as bad as you think. Plus, you get some auroral propagation. But, you know, we are kind of holding on to the solar flux in the high 70s. Um, might drop a little bit over the next few days, but we do have those new regions that are rotating into Earth view here maybe two or three days from now, maybe a little bit longer, and that could keep that solar flux boosted. So as long as you get through the solar storms, you know the propagation on Earth's day side should stay pretty decent. And now for you GPS users, well, I have to admit that, you know, you're going to have some issues, especially on Earth's night side, as long as those solar storms are occurring. And dawn and dusk anywhere near those regions might also be problematic for you. So please stay away, keep, keep aware that your uh, GPS reception may be a little bit squirrely near dawn and near dusk, and also, of course, anywhere near there's aurora. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.